Okay, in the last chapter, we learned a few rules for how to work with multiplication and how to work with addition when we're dealing with equations. And a couple of these rules were the idea of the commutative principle, that you could re rewrite any addition problem, for instance, backwards. So 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. And the same thing could apply if these were multiplied instead of added. All right. And then when we're multiplying three things in a row or adding three things in a row, uh, we could use the associative principle. So 2 plus 3 plus 4. If I add these two together and then add the 4, I'm going to get the same result as if I do it this way. If I add the 3 and 4 together and then add the 2. 2 plus 3 is 5 and 4 is 9. 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 2 is 9. Gets the same result either way. Now these... Uh, rules. This is called the commutative principle or the commutative property, and this is the associative property. Okay, let's just get rid of that. What happens when we have combination of addition and multiplication in the same problem? So, what if we have something that's like two times? Let's just put the dot there, even if we don't need it. Five plus three. If I take, if I want to double five plus three. We've learned the order of operations, that what goes in the parentheses happens first. So this would be 8 times 2. We know this is going to be 16. Okay. So there's no question about what this should be. But there's another way to do this problem. And this will, is going to allow us uh, to, to simplify certain kinds of equations. So it's important to be able to switch back and forth between these two. Notice if I have two piles of things, and I want to add them together and then double the result, it's like doing this, what's shown in this equation. I take my 5 and my 3, I combine the two piles, and then I double it. But another way to do it would be to double each pile. If I double this pile first, and I'll get 10, and then I double this pile, so I have 6, you can, can you see that the doubling each of these and then adding the results, it also is going to give me 16. But it looks like this should uh, work every time. Now the example given in the book is a little bit different picture, but it also is pretty straightforward. What if I want to find the area of this large rectangle? Okay, notice it's made up of two smaller rectangles. All right, so there's two ways I could go about it. I could first add the 4 and the 7 to get the length of the large rectangle. Remember, by the way, the area is length times width. Okay, we're assuming that in using this kind of a picture. So if I want to take the length times the width of the overall rectangle, 4 plus 7 is 11 times 5, this looks like the same kind of an expression. So 5 times 11 is 55, and that would be the area. But there's another way to find the area, which is to find the area of each one of these and then add them up. Notice this area is 5 times 4, and this area would be 5 times 7, because the width still here is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 7 is 35. If I add 35 and 20, again I get 55. Okay? So, in other words, if I take 5 times 4 plus 7, this should give me the same result as if I took 5 times 4 and then added it to 5 times 7. Okay? So this principle here, this this pattern is going to be something that's always true. If these were any numbers, not just 5, 4, or 7, then five time, you know, one number times the sum of the other two could also be distributed, is the, where we're going to get this word here. The 5 could be multiplied by each of these numbers in here, and then the results added together. I can't just take 5 times 4 and add it to 7 but I can take 5 times 4 and add it to 5 times 7, and these are always going to give me the same results. Gave me these results in these two problems, 
turns out it's a general principle. Okay, let's use this now. Okay, now here's a case where if I want to simplify the expression, notice there's an x in there, so I can't do the arithmetic inside the parentheses like the order of operations would indicate we should do. And so instead of that, if I can change this into a different form, I could perhaps get rid of some of the clutter and write a simpler expression. And this might be a step in solving a problem. Okay, so we're going to use this distributive law. Let me just write it up here. A times B plus C. When I have this kind of an expression, I can write it as A times B plus A times C. So I distribute the mul multiplication distributes over addition. So I can take mul the multiplier out in front times each of the two terms inside and then add up the result. Okay, so AB plus AC. All right, let's use that here. So if I take the 5 times x plus 2, I could rewrite this as 5x plus 5 times 2. I've taken care of this part of the problem. So then I can just say plus 9. And now, let's see what we have. 5x plus 5 times 2 is 10 plus 9. And now I can add my 10 and 9 is 19. So 5x plus 19. So we've taken a pretty cluttered looking expression and we've simplified it by doing as much as we can to, to actually do the computation. All we would need to know to find the final result would be to know the value of x. If somebody told us somewhere along the line that x equals 2, it could be 10 plus 19 is 29. Of course, you could do that here, but there would be more arithmetic at that stage. Okay? Let's try to simplify these as well. Okay? Notice that I have a multiplication and I have an addition. So I have the parentheses and something is being multiplied by the sum of two other things. Now these things that are being added in here are two terms. It doesn't have to be just a single number. Here is an expression, 3x plus 7. But I take 4 times this whole expression plus 4 times this. So 4 times 3x is 12x. I can just do it as we go, or I could take more steps if I really felt I needed to. 4 times 7 is 28, so I'll take 4 times 7, 4 times 3x, and then I add the result here, and then minus 50. Okay, now these two are just purely numerical, so I can go ahead and combine these. Notice they have opposite signs, so I take little from big and a sign of the big. So the result's going to be 12x, and I take 50 minus 28, little from big, the sign of the big, by the way, is going to be minus. The 50 dominates here. So 8 and 2 makes 10. 3 and 2 makes 5. Okay. Let's try the next one. Here I have 7. Now this part involves uh, something I can use the distributive rule for. So 3 times 2x, 3 times 8. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 8 is 24. Now here, if I really wanted to be um, picky about it, I could do two steps. I could use the commutative property to turn these around. But we know that what that actually means is I don't need to add in order. I can take any term plus any other term and then any other term as a result. Okay, So 7 plus 24. 4 and 7 is 11. 3. That's 31 plus 6x. And then I can just leave it like that. Okay.